On my previous episode, we explored the topic of how to position yourself and your business for success in today's ever-changing social and economic environment. Today, we're going to continue that conversation. I'm Larry Kortkamp, and welcome to BizPoints TV, where we talk about new and trending business topics, smart technologies, and of course, the people that are having an impact on our local communities. Create a stronger and more dynamic business. Larry Kortkamp, founding partner at the Kortkamp Group, talks with industry insiders about trending topics moving the needle for local business today. Here's your host, Larry Kortkamp. Back to help me continue this topic are Richard Gadbury, Senior M&A Advisor for Murphy Business Financial Corporation, and Craig Cowles, Certified Financial Planner and Founder and CEO of Intracraft. Welcome back, you guys. Let's pick up. I know it's been a while, but let's pick up where we left off. Before, in a previous show, we talked about you know getting a business started, what, what the, the processes yes. are, the steps to doing that. We didn't get a chance to actually cover into the management of a business, so now it's up and running. It may not be that successful yet, but mm -hmm. it's working there. How do, we, how do we take that business in this role? How do, you manage, how do you manage an efficient, profitable business? What are the steps for that? First of all, don't be the manager. <laughs> yeah. okay? If you're the owner, don't be the manager. It's the, it's the key point. Your job is not to run it. That's not the operational right. aspect of it. Right. Yeah, I think that. I, I, think it, I think you have to... You know, they always say, are you working on the business or in the business? I think you have to position yourself to, to be able to step out, put your CEO hat, and actually run the company rather than building, you know, and, and, and building things and actually going out and selling things. And so to do that, you have to hire good people. Absolutely do. Uh, you said the bad word, hiring other yeah. people. You know, the number one fear uh, of hiring anybody is the training time. It's the effort you have to put into it. Let me give you a perfect example. So I've been in aviation since I was 16, flown. I flew big jets. Well, when you hire a new pilot and to fly a jet, it could be a Challenger, it could be a Gulfstream, whatever, they have to go to training. If they're current, that's your, your golden. But if they're not current, you've got to send them to school for a week to two weeks. That could cost you upwards of twenty to $30,000 for somebody who owns a jet. And even people who pay that price for a large jet don't like paying that. If that guy finds a job in three months, there's no training contract or no agreement, he, he leaves. So, and it's like, ah, oh, you know, I just, so business owner is faced with the same problem I found is like, okay, I got to train this person, but you have to ask yourself, what are you going to train them on? Yeah, there's typically, that's, I would agree with that. The onboarding of a new employee in, in, the, in the lower middle market, there is no training class like that that you go to. Nope. And, and then you're a busy, you're a busy owner and you don't have time you doubled to doubled up spend. the time. Yeah. You yeah. Now you don't time have time to spend. You know, that's such a common, it's such a common knowledge subject, right? We know you got to train somebody. Yep. We yep. know it's expensive yes. to acquire and train the new employee. We know it's less costly to just retain an employee. But every time I go to a big conference or they're discussing H&R issues or whatever, they act like it's the opposite, right? They're not really concerned with yeah, onboarding or training or teaching. No. They want to hire because no. everything is now digitized online. Mm -hmm. I can just get the perfect employee for this perfect role, and mm -hmm. they know everything. And then they wonder why their retention is right. in the toilet, <laughs> and nobody knows anything. And, That's right. Right? Because okay. they, they thought this. They, th they thought the the disc test was going to solve all those yeah. problems for them online. Colby's uh, better, but not the disc. <laughs> I wouldn't do the disc. Disc is for salespeople. Colby does much better for that. Uh, uh, if I offer a solution. Um, this is the one I, I would, it's been proven to work at least. But number one, you have to set up your culture and your business. You have to know what your culture right. is like. What right? do you mean by that? Culture is where it's not about pay. If you look at, there's a certain salary breaking point where you get to $79,000, people don't really care, care about pay anymore. They care about the culture of the business. Below 79, yeah, they live, care a lot about pay, but they want to be treated well and respected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, are you basing your work on hourly work or are you on task-based work? Task -based work? I know companies, I know a guy in Australia who only, his uh, employees only work four days a week. Mm -hmm. He tried it and it was highly successful. He got more production and more work out of his employees because only worked Monday through Thursday. Everybody gets Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. He's like, that's crazy, why would you ever do that? He says, because I get the same amount of work done based on his yeah. type of business. Right. I was going to say, because obviously I'm not going to close my restaurant down on nope. Friday. i got to have people working it all the time. But Richard and I actually talked about this subject mm -hmm. before. And it's, we have, on our network, we've interviewed uh, restaurant owners. 
And one in particular that just pops in my mind, she's had the restaurant for many, many years. She has employees, now this isn't a restaurant, yes. she's had waiters, wait staff for 10, 20 years that mm -hmm. somebody's worked there. It's, it's obviously the not because yeah. they're right, re right. retiring rich on this thing, it's gotta be something else. I think it's probably, when we look at business sales, uh, you know, if you go to the bank, they're looking at what your asset value is. And, and asset value to them means trucks and, and tools and yeah, the kind of things. things that you need to run that business, but it's actually the people. You know, that, when a buyer's buying a business, they're buying, as he said on, on a, a previous episode, they're buying residual income. And, and residual income is generated by the people driving those trucks, the people that are making those phone calls, and the, sell, the people that are selling the product. That's where it comes from. So how do we create this culture as a, as a business owner? What are the, are, oh, are there, is there another step-by-step step kind I of I think it's two things. I think one is communication. You know, you, you had a passion when you started this business and you know where you wanted to go. Are you communicating that down through the people that work for you? Are you and then are you empowering people to be able to deliver and, and that stay point. along with your, with your, with your, with your the passion? Empowerment, the empowerment phase, because I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, our own assistant we hired recently, she's really good. But when she asks questions, and I, say, I throw it back to her, and I said, that's in your court. She goes, what do you mean? You're empowered to make yeah, that decision. There you go. And, and you don't crucify her if she makes the wrong decision, right. well, because that's part of the learning process. Right. Right. Well, not even that, but the wrong decision does not cost. So in other words, the decision she's making, when I'm, and I'm <laughs> easing her into it because I understand, I understand her Colby score, number one, how she works. But the function of it is, hey, if you do something and you mess it up, it's not going to hurt anything. You have to tell people, I'm not right. going to be mad at you. Think about it. You're growing up in life, and every time you did something wrong, you got scolded. That's what people are used to in their behavior patterns. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you have to let them understand is let them see you say, you know, if you, you know, make a mistake, I'm not going to come back at you and just scold on you for doing it. Because it, there's no real cost to it. it there's a, I think there's a story in one of the John Maxwell books that talks about the, the breaking of a glass vase, you know, at someone's house, and the guy says she's really fraught, distraught that she broke this vase. He's like, he reaches over and knocks down another vase. See, accidents happen. And it's the point of saying, well, wait a minute, this is, this is different. I try That's and talk thing. to uh, small businesses right now, particularly in our hospitality industries, right? So restaurants, uh, hotels, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, about this very fact, they keep saying, I can't pay my people enough I'm trying to recruit, right? It's the whole economy, it's the environment, they don't want to work because I can't pay them enough. They're approaching it from the wrong exactly. aspect. To me, that's like saying I can't afford to put gas in my car to go to a meeting. <laughs> I agree with you're, that. You're not going to get to the meeting without putting gas in your car. You know, that's the, that's the lifeblood of your business. You know, when you go, you're speaking of hotels, that's a perfect example of, a, of an owner. Do you own the business to make money or do you own the business to create a service? Because it's a service industry. That's a key so point the question, that we run on one way. So thing. the question is, do the, do the cleaners and, and the, the, the front desk person, do they all have the same mission and understanding and passion about that business? Or are you going to get, you know, whatever, whatever from somebody because they, they don't care? And well, think so, about the experience. You teach about, think about the experience of the person on their side. The a number one hotel I went down to in Ixtapa, Zihuatanejo was an amazing hotel. It's part of this group out there uh, that's a concierge group. They created these concierge hotels. They're not a business that own all of them. They just teach them how to create the hotel and create the experience. And we went down to one of them, and you walk in, you know, and they take your bags and know who you are when you get out of the car. Oh, you must be the Coles. And I said, yes, we are. Oh, okay, why don't you come over here and sit down? And then all of a sudden, they they give us tequila, <laughs> right? That happens a lot. <laughs> that happens a lot in your, in your family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're gonna, like, okay, yeah, all right. We're gonna so take a quick break. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. A polished look says a lot about you. In under three seconds, that first impression can open and close doors. Jeff Reeve. Japreve has the brands you love to wear. Style & Company, Pistola, Aiden, Vince Camuto, and more. 165 labels with fit that flatters. Japreve.com. Japreve ships from Farmers Branch, Texas. Ask us about local DFW fashion shows that bring Japreve right to you. 
Upscale fashion doesn't have to be expensive, and you don't have to dig through racks of clothes that end up damaged and missing buttons from being tried on over and over and over again. Chaprieve.com is your answer to fine clothing in casual, career, and formal wear. Make a name for yourself. Do it in style. Chaprieve. Chaprieve.com. Name brand apparel without the department store prices. My American dream is to help you stay healthy and energized so you can live your American dream. Our American dream is equipping future generations of American dreamers. My American dream is to protect my community so they can live their American dream. My American dream is to bring you some spice and flavor to your life. Our American dream is ensuring what's most valuable to you. Our American dream is creating opportunities for healthcare providers so they can have their American dreams. My American dream is serving our business community and advocating for all of your American dreams. Business runs on technology and human beings are creatures of habit. Unfortunately, not all our habits are good. Technology, when it works, is supposed to make our lives easier, creating routines that allow us to protect customer data, track our progress, forecast the future, communicate better, and move much faster. So you need technology solutions that work when you're not working or simply not paying attention. Smart technology solutions, making the complicated uncomplicated. Hi, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation, uh, really getting more into the management of a business. And when we left, uh, we were talking about how a business actually conducts its service, its culture, and how that culture is passed down from whoever that leader is of the organization. How does he transfer that message down through the, the rank and file, mm -hmm. right? So that everybody's on, on message for when they come to work. Yes. And there's great examples of that. And, and here in Texas, we've got some good ones. Well, I talked about with, like I said, if anybody has a chance, you need to pick up the book Nuts and read about the story of Herb Kelleher in Southwest Air. Southwest Air, yeah. You have to read that book if you're gonna create a culture because he was the one who epitomized what to create a great culture is all about. And the reason we're talking about that is because too many businesses think money is what drives everything and the money that they're compensating their employees and there's there's other things and and I mean the 799 that you know that you talked about but most people in the restaurant industry aren't making 799 no. and and many industries they're not but they enjoy the culture they like the business they like the people that they work with mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of reasons why people go to work every day. And if your business yeah. needs a yes. specific type of individual, you need to know how to recruit that individual. You need to know how to interview that individual and hire that individual. I, I used an example of these big companies that they were hiring strictly off, offline and through online mm -hmm. testing and they go through three tasks. Did anybody ever sit down and talk to that guy? Yeah, you know, that's true. The if point. you'd have just sat down for him for one minute, he wanted your job. That was the only reason he was yeah. here. Let he me, wants to be CEO, me, and he wants yeah. to be it in six months. And because you kept him in turning nuts and bolts, he wanted to leave you, right? Mm -hmm. I can preface that with a couple things you need to do first. And I think Richard, Richard and I, I know we've had this discussion before. Besides culture, you, in your business, you have to know what you're selling. What is it your product is that you're going out to? And I'm saying product as as a, just a thing. I'm saying product is what is it you're selling and how is it packaged? And how, is there a process in that product that you've built? So what does that mean? Well, in number one, it tells you, it defines exactly what you need to build out your business, the different positions you do need. If the process is built and you assign ownership of that process to the individual person and task it out, I believe in task-based work. I don't believe in, hourly base work, I think that's an old Ford thing with, yeah. that doesn't, it works on assembly lines because it does work on assembly lines. Right. Service-based businesses or other types of business um, are ta should be task-based and that whole process needs to be built from the top down. Everybody knows it. That way you can talk about it every week if it's working or not and make adjustments. But give ownership to your employee in that culture. That's part of the culture issue. I think is very important. Are you talking about benefits, or you t I mean, you say product and, and its value? 
Well, you build the pro you, I, I think you build the product out, and you have to build kind of productize your business, whatever it is you can. There's so different for ways instance, doing it. Here at OBBM, yeah. right? We're we're a media company, mm -hmm. right? so when I'm going to go out and I'm talking to talk to a restaurant as a potential advertiser on here. Mm -hmm. What is that restaurant, particularly if it's a, a, a sports bar kind of a thing? Correct. What do you? What is your? What is your product that you're selling? You're selling fun, right? Yeah. People want to come here. They like the activity, they like <clears throat> the movement, the people, the lights, the TVs, all that kind of stuff. You can't sell that on print. My value is I can show that mm -hmm. to your potential audience. Yes. I can show them how much fun it is to be going to your restaurant. Well, look at how Disney does it. I mean, Walt Disney was one of the epitomes of why he, when he built Disney originally, yes. nobody ever yes. came, wanted, like, what? Uh, who'd ever want to go to a theme park in California? Yeah. I mean, go, you know, going to ABC, yeah. asking him for money, and we'll do this wild animal show. But Walt, remember, his vision was he went to that park one time, and he saw that carousel was completely broken down. He says, I never want this to happen. So we created this whole vision of creating Disney as a fun place to be, and once people figured it out, it exploded. So your bar example is, what is the experience that they get when they walk in the door? Yeah, the ambiance. What's the ambiance? What's the ambiance exactly. for the business, yeah. If, 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 and it could be different, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm giving you a promotion tonight, so we're gonna go out to a nice place where the lights are low, it's a little quieter, we can be alone, I can tell you what a great job you've done and this is why you're getting your promoted. Or we're taking my daughter out to her birthday, I want that one to be kid-centric and blah, blah, blah. So all these theme. things, yeah, all Have these things fit, fit into the... Well, think about this though, Larry, when would you pay more for the product or service that you're, that you're gonna buy? You know, when would you pay more than what you felt was the market value? When would you pay more? Every single time. Yeah, because they... Every uh, single time. Yeah. Because I, I need it to be... Experience. I don't need the cheapest, right? I need, I need the best. And, yeah. and the best typically, they usually fall within a market range. Right. Some people, are, they're, they're not always the best when they're the most expensive. They're trying to hit a different class of people, right? Oh, I never buy my jackets at that place. I, <laughs> yeah. I get my clothes over here. Why? Well, because they clothe us to the cowboys, right? What's well, the car you drive? It's the house you exactly. live in. The clothes, you know, clothes you wear. There's a perception of value that you have, and the more you know, the more you believe in the perception of value, then the more you're going to spend for the product or service that you're that you're buying. And again, the same the thing with consumers. The reason for our audience, which are typically small to mid-sized businesses, is is this is important for you to understand how to properly value your business. Great segue. <laughs> well, no, no, how do you value your business and, and how do you pass that value along to your, your employees, your customers? Because you need to re reinforce this to everybody that you're trying to meet, whether they work for you or you're trying to get them to either buy your goods and services or come into your place of business. So every one of these things that we've talked about as far as management mm -hmm. and there are tools today fortunately for different size different types of businesses mm -hmm. there are now uh, different software different procedures that actually take you out of that right. running the business mold every day and give you different tools that we never used to have some of these are fantastic as, as something simplified as your your cell phone today right. yeah, so exactly. if you were managing people out in the field how much easier did that just become mm -hmm. running your cell phone or a or a tablet or something to help your salespeople record a sale. Or ah, but there is a limitation to that. Okay. The technology interference is causing productivity hampering as well. Okay, so in that you're talking about technology needs to blend you, that's seamlessly why the process, and not be a chore. That's why the process has to be so gotcha. nailed down. If you don't nail down process, you can get distracted in all the nuances of somebody brings in a new tool or software or app. I mean, it's just like, let's, if you can't boil it down to three steps in doing something, you're, you're outside. You're, you're going way outside uh, the element of building a process. The process needs to be so distraction-free because you're dealing with a human, the human element of everything. We're limited in our own capacity, but we think we can overlay with technology expanding that, and we can't do that. It has to be still a growth culture of understanding how to, when you recruit and train and develop the right person, and you're building that culture, make sure that you build the process to fit the person, I, I totally not agree the with technology. That. And did we see that live out in real time? When yeah. the world All the had time. to go to Zoom from home, right? Yeah. Okay. Just that one thing. Yes. Uh, you're fuzzy. Oh, you I can't hear you. Can you hear me? How <laughs> many? How much waste? Breaking up. This is my. And like I said, this is my next talk. I talked. We talked about this. I think last week. Remember. 
I said, the one thing I'm going to talk about is the time that we've lost in COVID and how the distractions of using technology has actually hampered ability in production. Yeah. Because we spend too and much I, time. And I don't even want to, it's not yeah. necessarily a COVID, it's, it's, it's this other phase that we just talked to. It's how do we create more of a, uh, a mobile environment or something that that's we now the, is operating the big from thing right now. Yeah, from different things. Yeah. We're, we're operating from home. We're operating from a car, a remote location, mm -hmm. or just technology in general, right? So we're saying Zoom, but it could be anything. It could it be, be it could be converting your your pest control guy that's out doing the servicing, and he's he's taking all the notes on the job down, mm -hmm. and now you've given him a tablet to do that with. Well, then it's also the expectation of when this goes back to time. There's no such thing as time management. That's a fallacy, right? It's about time allocation. How many times do you answer your email per day? The distraction. And how many times should you? And how many times should you? I'm going to stop you. Yeah. Um, we've said this before. Local business is the lifeblood of all the programs we produce here on the OBBM network. And before we go to our last break, I'd like to acknowledge two of them. The furnishings that you see here on the BizPoints TV set are from Office Furniture Source. And, of course, the amazing Grace Point media crew who make sure that we always look and sound our best. So we'll be right back and continue our conversation. 90% of news outlets in the United States are controlled by six corporations. They're not out to tell you the truth of what's happening. They're out to tell you the picture of the world that they represent. The mission of the Epic Times is to chase the truth, to ground all statements and facts, and prevent people from being misled. This is a battle, a battle between truth and deceit. Subscribe today and join the Americans who are seeking truth and tradition. We'd love to have you on board. My American Dream is to help you stay healthy and energized so you can live your American Dream. Our American Dream is equipping future generations of American Dreamers. My American Dream is to protect my community so they can live their American Dream. My American Dream is to bring you some spice and flavor to your life. Our American dream is ensuring what's most valuable to you. Our American dream is creating opportunities for healthcare providers so they can have their American dreams. My American dream is serving our business community and advocating for all of your American dreams. Business runs on technology and human beings are creatures of habit. Unfortunately, not all our habits are good. Technology, when it works, is supposed to make our lives easier, creating routines that allow us to protect customer data, track our progress, forecast the future, communicate better, and move much faster. So you need technology solutions that work when you're not working or simply not paying attention. Smart technology solutions, making the complicated uncomplicated. Hi, and welcome back to BizPoints TV. Uh, we're talking with Craig Cowles and Richard Gadbury about your business and how to make it better than it is today. So when we left, we were, I kind of threw it back into the values. We've been talking about other things, and then it was about values. But really, everything we want to talk to a business about really does center around value. And I don't mean just to sell the business. Correct. Creating the proper evaluation of your business or why your customers should value your business, why your employees should value, it's all about value, isn't it, Richard? Well, it's about, you know, I think when you when you think, if you ask a CPA, what's the value of my business, then you're going to look at tax returns and balance sheets and P&Ls and say, the numbers say this. And if you if you ask somebody that's going to, if you think about even selling your product, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to build margin into the product you're selling. And that's the difference of a business broker or a merchant acquisition guy looking at your business on what, how can I sell this and, and create a higher value than what the tax returns and balance sheets and profit and loss statements say. Mm -hmm. Because there's there's an inherent value and it's called goodwill. And goodwill is really That's, your employees. Yeah, the goodwill is the is the very much intangible. It's yeah. like how do you put a stab of right. value on that? That's right. And that's gonna be part of how satisfy how easily your business runs internally, how the machine is oiled, how well it works together. Mm -hmm. That's goodwill because that's the face of the business. So I'd say keeping score. I, you know, if, if I had to say anything about how to manage a business, you know, you need to create 
a way to keep score, KPIs. We were talking about that during the break. But uh, you need to have a way that you can you can track metrics and 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 understand what what makes this business fly and how do we create the most value, you know, for our customers and for the product that we sell or build and and uh, and you and you can't just do that on the fly. You really have to have processes. You have to have processes and scorecards and and metrics and understand who's who and why are are they more productive than this guy and what can we do to. Even on the, we started out with a landscaper, you know, yeah. scenario, but even, yes. no matter what your business is, you better know how much you're paying for a bag of fertilizer. You better know how much ground cover that a fertilizer goes for. You got to know what your competitors are charging for ground cover. You got to know how much the plan is. Does it go? All these things, even on the mm. most simplistic business, you've got to know the numbers of your business. Let me tell you a story about a landscaper. So a landscaper comes to me and says, man, I just can't believe we're not making the money. We got all these jobs we're doing. Well, tell me about it. Tell me how it works. Well, okay, so we, uh, we roll in here around 6 o'clock in the morning, and then we get in our, our 9 or 10 vans, and we drive down to the gas station, and we get in line and wait an hour while we pump the gas and, and all that. Then we come back, and then we, we get our edgers and trimmers, blades sharpened, and, and we, we put string on our trimmers, and then, you know, we're out of here by uh, 1030, and then we're mowing and blowing and going all the rest of the day. What happened if you had one guy that came in at four o'clock in the morning and did all that for you? Now, that, this one statement was a $30,000 a year correction over the time wasted yeah. of having to get in your van and sit in line for an hour get, to get gas. And you know, people say, oh, anybody would have known that. I, this guy was an idiot. No, he's been in this business it for five years. It happens every <laughs> single day and, That's right. and in a variety of different examples. It's because right? you're not watching your business. It is what? In the, in the uh, technology space, why do you get uh, an MSP, a, a service provider, somebody to take care of you? Yes. Well, you got somebody coming in at, at <laughs> 8 o'clock in the morning, and he's turning up all your servers for you. Exactly. He's making sure your Internet's up. He's making sure. Why are you doing that at 8 o'clock? Yeah. And how much are you paying that person That's to right. do that when it could be done for you? And when you walk That's in the right. door at 8 o'clock, everything's, everything's already smooth. up That's and right. ready to go. That's right. Well, go back to KPIs. This, this is so important about the creating the culture and the value of your business. And I'll give you, I'll give you a, a good example. Of this. Well, I worked... In aviation, I work for an aviation manufacturer, an airplane manufacturer. They're business jets, and there's another competitor out there. Um, they built, so this, the Gulfstream, which is a very popular business jet, is, is com the completion is what's the most important. So it's, they get this thing called green planes. Green plane is where you just buy it, and, but it's not finished. It's like the interior of your car not being completed. Well, this other manufacturer built uh, another, a competitor to Gulfstream, but the, there was a difference. They said, well, we're going to offer cu full customization because the other manufacturer doesn't do full customization. They offer about seven options. Well, they, got, they blew themselves up because what happened was, uh, I remember this because they were doing these full customized interiors. It took them five times as long to complete because these people were requesting things like uh, one was a very famous uh, producer who wanted a video editing machine within the, the airplane. Well, I'm, so the problem is, you can't just stick something in the airplane that you would stick in the ground. Because the FAA says, no, we got to do non-destructive testing on it, which means this is going to catch fire. The, so the, the manufacturer learned very quickly that the model that worked the best was putting the scope of work down in a limited area and say, if you want anything else besides this, you have to do it on your own. But they churned out such a quality product because they said, I can't argue with them because the thing works all the time. They know how to do it. They do a great job. And that, that particular model works well in the construction business, right? You've yeah. got you've got builders. You've got uh, D.R. Horton. You got a, they, they build a, a specific product. They might build five different floor plans, but it's the same five different floor plans because they same they line too. up their they line up their vendors. They line up their suppliers, their workers. Everybody knows their place to be and and when to be there. All that, all that happens, but that's just really just putting the systems in place. But it so, also does the same thing about your building value. Yeah. Because what happens is, is now your employees know what to do. You don't have these simple, these customizations that you have to apply, and you don't have, and the, uh, the owner doesn't have to come in. You don't have the, you know, whatever you quote now. Because what what happens when you do these quotes and you do these? Well, I got to add on change orders. I got to add on this change order, and the person's like, I hate this. Change order after change order, but they don't realize they're causing it instead of saying, no, this is the box. One thing I didn't do before, and I really want to do it this time, because these, yeah. these two guys are not armchair quarterbacks here. They actually run businesses that can help you in your business. Craig's got so much information online on systems and how you can operate your business. So 
why don't we take the next few minutes? Sure. Craig, how do they get in touch with you and, and what, are you, what are you looking for? To... Well, the business I'm looking for are usually in the grow to scale stage. So if your revenues are approaching a half million dollars up to about 20 million in revenue and you're in a space that has, that you're looking to get to a point to sell and you have employees that you're working with or partners, those are the types of business I'm looking for to work with. Um, Entrecraft.net, E-N-T-R-E-C-R-A-F-T.net is the site. You can email me at Craig, C-R-A-I-G, at Entrecraft.net to get more information. There's a couple free tools you can go. I was going to say, because there's other tools. You don't have to yeah. be in that parameter. There's a tool either. that helps gives you a score of your own business. What I would suggest doing is just go there and, you know, look, get, go take it. It's free. Get the score. Find out where your business sits. That's just com and it's compared to other SIT codes because you have to put in the, the code that you of the business you work in and it will give you a comparable number and how you score against other businesses your peers, and the other one is do the Freedom Point questionnaire. We're about to put that up. It's not it should be up by the time this goes out, but you want to know what you want your life to look like. A lot of business owners forget that, but that's the key of what we do. And if you need to. Uh, any help or any advice, we are eventually going to publish a self-help site wow. for certain business owners. Basically, just log in, and uh, you'll be able to see some videos to help address some issues in your own business based on what we think is best to create value. And I, I, I'm, I don't want to be prejudiced on this next one, but I've been in, I've been in business a long time, and I've, I've never met somebody that has the skill sets that Richard's got in his business. So Thank you. How do we how do we get to uh, Murphy Business Brokers? So so here's the way I think about life. You know I'm like a lifeguard, and and whether it's a little kid drowning or a, a big kid drowning, I'm I'm going to jump in and save them. I've seen so many business owners who have tried to do this on their own. You know, because how hard can it be? You know, just to take a a business, put it on the market, and find a buyer, and sell it. And you know, it's very hard. And so uh, you know, I I really have a soft heart for people that are trying to go through that that uh, tough life decisions on things. You know, th most of these people I meet, it's about retirement. And, and uh, you've been working your whole life to get to this point. You deserve every penny that's, that you, that's you should get. No so is it, Murphy, that. is it yeah. murphybusinessbrokers.com? What's the, what's the? Yeah, Murphy, Murphy, Business, uh, Murphy Business and Financial Corporation is the website. And, uh, and, and you can find me there. You can call me on the cell. I mean, all, my, all of my information is there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. You can find me. If you just Google my name, Richard Gadbury, you can find my information. Yeah, and the number one thing I'll say about Richard is that you want to go with someone like him with his experience. Yeah. You, you can't discount experience. And I heard that from one of my mentors. He says, knowledge without experience is meaningless. Well, you guys yeah. are great. Thanks for coming on and doing a double Thank episode you. with me. Uh, you you've been watching BizPoints TV on the OBBM network. You can subscribe to BizPoints uh, anywhere you find TV or on-demand video. Uh, you can watch the network on Roku to even watch it from your living room. And you can also find us on Rumble.com and many more. So give us a Rumble. Share us with your friends. Remember, programs on the OBBM network are recorded at Grace Point Studio in Farmers Branch, Texas, in front of a live studio audience. So come out and join us, and we'll save you a seat. To be a guest or request sponsorship information, contact the Court Camp Group at 972-824-8001 today. Production and programming information requests for the OBBM network should be directed to Offbeat Business Media by calling 214-714-0495 or send your request to info at offbeatbusiness.com. This Points TV, podcast, and radio show are produced by Offbeat Business Media for the OBBM network. Unauthorized use of logos, audio, video, or reproduction is strictly prohibited.